Uh, I came to Nantes, to the Institute for Advanced Studies, to pursue a project that's related to those previous books. Um, it is a political biography of uh, Diego Rivera, um, certainly Mexico's uh, historically most uh, important, most famous uh, painter, best known for his murals. Um, there's sort of a, a cliche of Diego Rivera today. He's best known for his paintings of uh, indigenous and peasant women. Uh, he's known for his sweeping murals of Mexican history in which the uh, armed peasants of the Mexican Revolution are featured. Um, and he's known within Mexico and I think outside of Mexico as one of the big three artists to emerge out of Mexico. Uh, the other two are men, Orozco and Siqueiros. And then perhaps more than anything, he's known today as the husband of Frida Kahlo, who really is now the most famous artist of, for, to come out of Mexico. Uh, she was not during her lifetime or during his. Um, but in the 1920s and the 1930s, Diego Rivera was really one of the big three artists of the world. He was known uh, as perhaps the equal of uh, Picasso and Matisse. And uh, unlike those two, um, he was known um, for the tie between his art and his politics. Um, not just his vision of Mexico and the Mexican Revolution, but also of uh, an international working class, of radical reform movements, and international communism. The key moment of change for Diego Rivera's reputation comes in uh, the 1940s and the 1950s. He died in 1957. And, and I think the main reason is uh, the Cold War. Uh, with the Cold War, um, governments, uh, museums, art critics favored abstract art over figurative art, and they dismissed political art as a kind of uh, simplified propaganda. Um, in Mexico, Diego Rivera continued to be um, celebrated, but really celebrated for the easy stereotypes of uh, Mexican folklore and the sort of militant peasant and the struggles of the Mexican Revolution that by this time had been institutionalized in, uh, in a relatively harmless way by the party of the institutional revolution which dominated Mexican politics in the 1920s. At the same time, scholars, not all scholars, um, and biographers, probably all biographers, um, dismissed Diego Rivera uh, in terms of his political activities and his political art. Uh, or if they addressed these issues, they really focused on uh, opportunistic uh, scandals, his uh, multiple affiliations with the left, his going in and out of the uh, Communist Party, and of course the uh, Rockefeller Center uh, scandal is uh, perhaps the most uh, important uh, moment of uh, political activity. So in sum, I am trying to take him seriously as a political artist and actor, and also as a global one, uh, while at the same time acknowledging his inconsistencies, which are uh, on the one hand uh, personal, uh, an artist with a tremendous um, ego and a tremendous uh, aptitude for capturing public attention, uh, but at the same time someone who was a part of his epoch and was a part of all of the contradictions of, these, of this period. So let, let me give you two examples uh, of how I am revising Diego Rivera in this biography. Uh, one is of course the, the famous episode at the Rockefeller Center, which uh, is often presented as this uh, uh, media intense confrontation between this radical painter and his boss, um, Ro the Rockefeller family, and uh, he was famously dismissed and his mural was destroyed for his inclusion of Vladimir Lenin and his refusal to remove it. Um, so that confrontation is important, but I think it's best understood in terms of uh, the context of the reformist and radical movements of the 1930s and including the, 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 the various uh, communisms that coexisted in that period, really. So to understand his, um, 
his design of that mural and his reaction to its destruction uh, really has to be done in terms of his uh, exclusion from the Stalinist Communist Party and his flirtation with the Trotskyists and with dissident communist par other dissident communist parties in um, the United States. Um, and um, the same can be said about his immediate reaction to that dismissal, which was to paint a really interesting series of murals for one of these alternative communist parties in New York City. Uh, it's called Portrait of America. And um, it is, uh, first of all, mostly forgotten because that communist party uh, didn't last through the 1930s. The uh, 21 panels were scattered, um, censored. Uh, most of them were destroyed in a fire in, a, in the union headquarters where most of them ended up. But that uh, mural presents this uh, startling revision of U.S. history, um, one that, as you might expect, puts the working class at the center of U.S. history, um, but also puts slavery and puts African Americans at the center of U.S. history. And that is... Uh, uh, startling and I think quite relevant to the current moment in the United States um, with uh, the Black Lives Movement and the, the rethinking of the U.S. past in terms of the slavery and its, and its legacies. So he's uh, startlingly relevant and at the same time forgotten. So here's a good example of how I'm trying to research Diego Rivera within the struggles of the political left, uh, the relevance of art and politics and really see him as more than simply a Mexican artist, but really one of the uh, great global um, aesthetic and political artists of the 20th century.